Did you guys both plan on wearing white? Yeah. Obviously, you're in the group text. You're the only one not wearing white. It's true. I like, like, I like being original. You're not wearing like white undies, white shorts. I got white undies. Oh, there we go. There's something. Stained. Yeah, Stained, of course. So like yellow down, brown. Brown. Let's start this bad boy. What time, time is it? Going. Six ten. This is the first time we're starting on time almost. I made sure to text you four hours before the podcast. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> I know you had stuff to do at home first. That was somehow more important than the podcast, but the stuff to do at your mom's home. Right. You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. You know, I just don't like the flavor of gas. You know what I mean? No, I don't know. I just don't like the smell of it. Welcome back to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. I am your host, Alexander Gonzalez. Next to me, Mark Nikolai. Nice to meet you. Across from me, Zach. Nikolai. We are your hosts. Next to him, Jared. That's what I said. Burroughs. Uh, who's going to talk about... Oh, he threw it away. Maybe not. But... The way. The he... The pronouns. It's okay. We're going to talk about cigar businesses. Different types of cigar brick and mortar businesses, to be precise. Different types of bars, lounges. Oh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I had breaking news that someone wanted me to report on. Uh, new pronouns just dropped. Hoo hoo. Uh, hoo hoo is on there. H U H U. Fay fair. Her her, but spelled H I R. Um, A M. Zay her. And Z Zem. And, uh, that's enough of that. So like I said, we're going to be talking about different lounges. Make sure you do after watching or listening to this podcast. Go support your local brick and mortar cigar business, whether it's a shop, whether it's a lounge. Uh, if you're in Florida or in certain parts of Michigan, pick up the Besa cigar as well. And um, yeah, let's just get into it. Right on. Right on. Brad. Thanks. I'll take that. Oh, that glass is cracked too. Is it? Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, I'm the edge. No biggie. Pour up some. Okay. For starters, the first category is just going to be simply like a shop. Yeah. They sell cigars, premium cigars, and that's it. Yeah. So that could be like a smoke shop or... Well... I mean, some smoke shops do have humidors. True. I didn't want to put them in the same category. But do those humidors have like high premium quality cigars? Some of them do, yeah. Sometimes. Some of them do, yeah. Very rarely. No, not true. It depends on your location. So some places that's the only place you could get cigars. Yeah. But we're very, you know, very lucky that we're not in that situation, right? We're going to talk about our situation, right? Relax, Jared. We'll get there. <laughs> you can J- edge until then. J- Jared's already scared. He's like, he's like, what do you mean? There's no nowhere to sit? <laughs> they sell vapes? <laughs> he's stressing. There's no McAllen 18 there? Definitely not. Mm. No McAllen, period. Wow. Mm. What happened? <laughs> no liquor license. What, what, are we, <laughs> what are we smoking today, guys? Uh, Zach? I am smoking the Placenta. Oh, Placencia, sorry. Uh, 151. Uh, kosher. Kosher? No, 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 it's C-O-S-E-C-H-A. Kosher. There you go. That sounds, sounds about right. Is your right? And this is a... Uh, nope. Kosha Pravada. It's pretty good so far. Jared? I'm smoking the Oliva V Series V Milanio Maduro. I love Maduros. Wow. (laughs) Series 5? Mark, what are you smoking, Mark? I'm smoking the LFD. That is the La Flora Dominicana, if you didn't know. Uh, Double La Hero. 
Wow. I'm smoking the Gambino Gold Series mm, cigar, nice. which is not a gold cigar. It's a Maduro cigar. Interesting. Interesting. I would not have guessed that. No. Because you are not a professional cigar smoker. We could put gold on there for you if need be. That we could do. Mark, you want to put some gold in there for him? If you pass it over, Brett, I'll do it for you. <laughs> a little too late. I already lit up. So, no. Maybe next time. It's not too late. It's never too late. Anyways, you could do it. <laughs> so, shops, right? Not a lot to say, but they're still vital. Like Zach said, certain communities where you are. Um, they're there. They're selling. People are smoking. Not in there, but they're smoking. Hey, you know what? And sometimes in those old like shops, you'll find some good cigars. Like some well-aged cigars. Exactly. Especially if they have lower traction, but they're still able to get some good stuff. You get those gems. Yeah. That's a good point, Mark. And really, if that's your only option, it's still a good option, depending on, you know, how much product they have. But a lot of them, if you have a dedicated humidor, I feel like you have pretty good product. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Especially if, uh, like, take out smoke shops from the equation, just like shops that only sell cigars, that are, like, in and out, you can't, can't really hang out there. Yeah, I mean, they're still gonna, I mean, they're, it's a whole selection, right? So they gotta be, have some good ones in there. Yeah, exactly. Some of these shops would include, maybe not anymore, but I know that Two Guys Cigar, this is not to be confused with these cigar guys, but Two Guys Cigars, they started off with just the shop selling cigars. Now they have more lounge seating. They've expanded. Mm. So humble beginnings. And now, much, much bigger dreams have been achieved. Um, I come to think of it, though, I don't know if I've been to, I probably have, but just a shop, like no lounge at all, just a cigar shop, not including smoke shops. I've technically been to one in mm. Utah. Really? Mm. That was the one where we had to smoke out in the warehouse. Because of the laws. Because of the laws. Mm. So, it's technically just a shop. True. That is true. They just had an event center in the back. Had an event center in the back, exactly. Yeah, we we've been to one in Deltona or Deland in a strip mall one time. Have we? Yeah, what, what does it a mean? strip mall in Deland, right near um that bistro. Dude, I'm not. I don't remember at all. Was Alex there with you? Yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. It was when we were scouting out places. The good old days. Yeah, it was when we used to drive around. Next to a bistro? Yeah, next to the bistro out there. With, next to the Winn-Dixie. It's not in the Winn-Dixie Plaza, but it's across the street. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, we have been there. See, it's not no very memorable. No seats at all. They had like two seats. See, so for the regulars. Uh, they were for the workers so, so they could sit down. All right. I think Mark anything claims. I think anything under like six seats is like primarily just a cigar shop just to sell cigars. Okay. But if you can sit down and smoke, it's a lounge. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think if there's under a certain amount of seats, like is it really a lounge? I don't think so. I wouldn't count it as a lounge. Well, if you smoked at a at a smoke shop, it'd be loitering. But if you smoke at a <laughs> smoke lounge or cigar lounge, it's lounge. It's accepted. Yeah. It's accepted. True. So he might be Mark might be onto something with a you know over and all <laughs> under six seat rule. So we'll verify after the show. I mean, I agree with him personally, but if we're gonna speak technically, I would say it's a lounge. If you're allowed to sit down and smoke. So it's okay to loiter there. I wouldn't yeah, yes. but prowl. What are the? I don't know. Pander. I still wouldn't consider it like a lounge. So like for it. example, that one in um. It's like it's like calling a to-go restaurant that has seats a dining restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Just like that lounge we went into in Oregon Beach, only had like four seats. That's true. Well, uh, yeah. So you wouldn't consider that a lounge? No. Hmm. I've actually Just seen. A a, so there's actually a to-go restaurant around here that actually has more than six seats on the inside. Yeah, and you still consider it a to-go shop. I would. I'm just saying there's some weird shit going on. 
Jared's freaking out right now. <laughs> the PTSD is hidden. And you know, those shops are good for their purpose. No, of course. Besides a vape, like when was, what was the last thing you bought at a smoke shop? Probably a cigar. Probably, yeah. A cigar, actually, in Savannah. True. Oh, yeah. So that's a prime example. Yeah. Those were all shops. Yeah. The cigar shops slash the smoke shops. There was one or two, I think, that were just cigar shops, though, right? Yeah. 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 So it's, you have been in one. I guess I have. There you go. Yeah. Now we can kind of blur this together, you know? And we found some good stuff in there, too. Exactly. To your point. Yeah. We found some old stuff. Room 101s. Stuff. A lot of good old room 101s. Yeah. Uh, Blind Man's Bluff by Codwell. Yeah, that was a good find. Not a lot of places have that. No. And that's the that's the good thing about these places. Is that you can find some age stuff, or not even age, but maybe like more exclusive stuff that you for, can't find at popular lounges. For sure. Because the regulars come in and buy all of them by the box. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Next up a lounge we have is like a online lounge. Oh, what? On, online, online online shop? Yeah. I guess. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's a quick mention next. Next brick and mortars we have is like a beer and wine. It's an online warehouse. <laughs> I, what? Brick and mortar. Brick and, I mean, I guess. I didn't, you can't smoke in there. It's not brick and mortar. Yeah, it is. Online? No, but it's a warehouse for the online orders. Okay. Do you smoke in the warehouse regularly? We have. That actually is, is true. true. That is we all have. Yeah, that is true. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna fire some jokes there. off. But all right, Mark. Know. Next, next we have a uh, beer and wine only. Beer and wine, o- like in the warehouse? No, like in a sh- oh, lounge. Like, oh, lounge. I think next oh. we have a lounge. Yeah, let's 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 well, there's different it back. types of lounges. Okay, exactly. There's different kinds. Of, yeah, he's he literally he's just skipping. said beer he's and skipping. wine. He's skipping. He's skipping. Oh, that guy that only sells cigars. Let's just talk about lounges, and then we'll go from there. Like maybe different ones that only sell lounges. sodas. Sure. What if they're free? Okay, so different types of lounges. You have like the beer and wine. You have the one that sells liquor. You have the one that sells food. And then you also have the one that's a membership only. And <sighs> what's the ones that don't serve liquor and the ones that you could bring your own liquor. Y- yeah, you're right. Okay. All right. I just want to point that out. You just you said you cut it off. And what's your favorite? My favorite liquor only lounges. <laughs> no cigars. <laughs> liquor. liquor only non cigars. Yeah, uh, you ever heard of the whiskey mi- in Orlando? It's actually called the whiskey. Yeah, they only sell whiskey. Uh, right, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. I've never been there. You sounded so confident. I know. I haven't been there either. I want to go. Let's go. All right, let's start off with cigar lounges that don't serve any type of alcoholic beverage. Thank you, Zach. What do you think of them? Honestly, um, I don't mind them. I've been to a couple good ones um, that don't sell liquor. Uh, For one, I was in one in uh, Chicago area that didn't sell any liquor. But to hang out in the lounge, you had to buy... I think it was like two sticks or you couldn't sit down, which is kind of weird, but I don't think it's weird at all. You don't think so? No, because how else are they going to make their money? Yeah, you're right. But what if I just want to buy one and sit down? Yeah, but they have to be able to make enough money to justify you taking a seat. Because if I come in and I spend like $300 and there's no seats and Mark's smoking a cigarillo because mm. he bought one single cigarillo. The situation happened to me like more than once. <laughs> It's pretty upsetting. Exactly. Now I'm kind of with Mark on this one. If if you have seating in an area, like yeah, you should be expected to buy something. I don't think they should put a limit amount because if you go to a restaurant and you get a cup of coffee, they'll give you a table. Like you don't have to buy X amount of food to stay at that table. Perhaps. Yeah, I guess a counter argument would be that cigar shops are way have way less traction. So they can't really afford to give up their seats as much. Yeah, but but they that's on them have for- a great purpose. You don't smoke at the house. Let's say you don't have a backyard. You don't have a porch. You don't really feel like smoking at inside. You go there, grab your cigars, hang out with the guys there. 
and you don't have to dirty up your area, so to say, mm-hmm. you know? Basically, you're borrowing time to dirty up someone else's area. Yeah. But- I feel like those lounges are usually full of like older people. Uh, it's more of like a relaxed vibe. Um, it's either going to be like regulars talking or you just by yourself. I think there's not really much of a mingling culture um, yeah. in cigar shops like that. Yeah. Actually, when I went, um, there, there was some comedy on TV and we were all talking about the comedy. So it's kind of cool. I think it depends. But if you have, at the same time, if you all you have is cigars and each other, what else are you going to do? Yeah, besides talk. Exactly. Or watch TV. Or get your work done. True. Yeah, I feel like most uh, most cigar shops that, you know, just have seating areas and they don't have anything else. And I feel like I feel like they're not really they're usually not like as I mean, just from my experience, they're not as set up. Uh, they're not like set up to handle not handle, but uh, cater to. Yeah. Cater to people who just want to work. Yeah, like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, like yeah, they have like lounge chairs. You can set a lounge chair, but if you want to sit at like a desk or a table, you know they don't have that. Um, it's more like just to like just a lounge around chair. Yeah. yeah, and those are two I think generally more regular centered. So whenever you go in there, it's pretty much all regulars. And yeah. you get the occasional people that walk in and buy something and leave. Yeah, for sure. For sure. some of them upgrade by. Giving out free soda and water. Sometimes even free beer. If you find the right ones. If you find the right ones. Sometimes uh, free old fashions. Mm. And th- so then we can move into. I just saw that yesterday. So you want to talk about it? Oh, did we you? can. Where is this? Across the street. <laughs> <laughs> so then, now we can move into, you know, uh, places that allow to, you to bring your own alcohol. Mm. You know, whether beer, wine, liquor, it doesn't matter. So this is a step up. From, from just a lounge. From just a lounge, yeah. Because it's usually, it's just a lounge, right? So, it's the same kind of style. Um, but usually those areas have a lot of like regulars and they bring bottles. They leave them there. They kind of sham around with people, um, you know, or they could just go there and drink if they want. But yeah. And you can actually, at least in Florida, get a license that allows people to legally bring their own liquor in. So that way there's no, there's not as much liability and stuff like that. So I can have a driver's license and a liquor license I pull out <laughs> when I bring my own alcohol. Well, I no, think, no, I the, think it's the, a business. <laughs> the business has their license. Well, Jared, Jared walks into a restaurant with his own liquor. He's like, sorry, I have a license. <laughs> well, I've seen this at a local shop where people bring their own bottles in or like their own like uh, containers in, so to speak. I think that's against the rules though. Is it really a rule if it's not enforced? I mean, it's a rule. I think it's enforced pretty heavily. I've never seen that enforced, but it's I don't- always enforced, and we always follow it. Oh, I mean, I've never brought a a cup to a, a a lounge or a bar or a restaurant before, but I think you can bring an empty cup. I don't see a problem with that. I mean, maybe it was empty. Maybe it wasn't empty. <laughs> as long as everyone believes it's empty, that's all that matters. But we follow the rules. But yeah, so this is a great way to say listen we don't provide you with liquor but you come here and spend money on cigars we'll let you bring some in and drink responsibly and we have an elevator to accommodate you i think that's a great rule especially for like if you want to be like a lounge but can't sell liquor that's perfect like yeah that yeah that'd be awesome you know yeah, it's a good middle ground yeah people still have fun they're still buying cigars you don't have to worry about losing your liquor license exactly so some people do. So we don't have to worry about that. Unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Now we can talk about what Mark was so anxiously wanting to talk about. Beer and wine. We're almost there. Beer and wine. Yeah, so people actually don't really think about pairing cigars with beer and wine too often, but um I find a good mix of the two. I think at the end of the day, too, the pairing should make you feel some type of way. So if you're drinking a nice ice cold beer with your cigar. And you're feeling good, then it's all fine with me. Maybe an IPA for Jared. Yeah, I don't think you guys ever see me drink an IPA yet. That's incorrect. 
An IPA? Yeah. When was that? Cigar Hustler. Oh. An example of a beer and wine establishment that sells cigars and is a lounge. And it's a cool place. It is. They have a freaking table bigger than this one with bi- that a table you can do work at with recline not recliners but almost like leather rocking chairs. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. 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 They're nice. They're comfy. Wine, however, is becoming more popular to pair with cigars, though. Yeah, I think more people need to do it. Um, I mean, it, it drastically changes the flavor of the cigar, I think. If you do it right. Well, yeah. I think the Cabernet route's the best route. I wouldn't drink white wine with a cigar. Mm, no. Maybe with a Connecticut. You know what, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> you could try it. He has a point, know. though. It would have to be like a non-sweet white wine, though. Yeah, I don't yeah. like white wine, though, so I wouldn't. I probably Maybe champagne. It's, champagne's a good celebratory. Drink with a good celebratory yeah. Davidoff. Yeah. Switch the smoke around, get a little bubbles in there. A little pop, pop, pop. Maybe if you have to put the smoke, take a sip, you get a little bubbles in your little crazy. cigar smoke in your bubbles. Absolutely crazy. And then it pops and releases smoke in your mouth. Yeah, it's like getting uh, the popping rocks, but you're drinking it. You take a straw, blow your cigar smoke into the champagne, into the bubbles, and then the bubbles will evaporate smoke. Exactly. And then you take a sip. What do you think about that, Zach? I'm thinking. Definitely thinking. Yeah. Next <laughs> next we got is um, my personal preference is a cigar shop that sells liquor also. Mm. A full service cigar shop. Beer, wine, liquor, everything. And I think these are, these are definitely the more popular out of the bunch. I mean, who doesn't love a good old fashioned? Well, especially if you're in a city like we are. Like we're in Orlando, essentially. Usually found in more populated cities with bar scenes. Yeah, I just i I personally like them better. Um, I, I don't know if it's my favorite on this list yet, but yet I like them. <laughs> I like them better just because you could bring people in there who don't smoke, and yeah. they could still have a good time. Um, and a lot of people come in there who don't smoke, and they just like the bar. They yeah. like the whiskey selection. They like the tequila selection, or whatever. Uh, and you get to mingle with them, you know, if you're drinking, smoking a cigar and they're just drinking, whatever. Um, and you know, of course you have some people that like their coffee, just go in and work, you know, cause they're generally larger lounges mm-hmm. if they have a bar. Um, so there's a lot more room to, you know, for activities, I guess. Mm. And you can kind of classify these into two different ones. You can have a, a lounge with a bar. Or a bar that sells cigars. That's a good point. They're different. Because yeah. you basically have a bar. Maybe it's going to be smaller. And they sell cigars. Like Jimmy's Cellar City Cigars, I would consider that a bar. It is a lounge, yeah, but it's, you know, a bar. And Corona, for example, is more of a lounge and it has the bar there. Yeah, that's If that a good makes point. sense. Because yeah. there's more lounge seating than there is bar seating. Cellar City is kind of like half and half. But yeah. the bar is the main focus. But, and but there's no bar act- seating. At where? Cellar City. There's what? bar seating. There's only lounge seating. Technically. Cellar City cigars? Yeah. There's, there's, there's no there's, bar seating? There's bar seating. Just because you don't sit there doesn't mean there's, this doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> but to Zach's point, that's a perfect place where I tried. I tried. people that just drink go, cigar smokers go. But there's a lot of people that go there that just drink. They don't smoke cigars, but they don't mind being in the environment. Yeah. And you have to give it to Cigar City also because they, uh, they're more of a bar, but they're also very focused on the cigars. Right. So, like, they don't have a big selection, but the cigars they bring in are all quality. Yeah. Oh, very curated. Beer and wine bars that serve cigars. Yeah. Morris Code, Winter Park. True. Yeah. But that, like that, you take that, you, so you take that, an example with. But that's only outside. Celery. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And it's like the selection is just completely different. One, you could tell it has cigars just to have cigars, and one has cigars because, you know, they're enthusiastic about cigars. True. One had the intention of opening up to cater around cigars. Exactly. But also cater to premium cocktails. That's Celery City, in case everyone's confused about that. So, yeah. Lounge versus bar. Similar, but different. And I think we can go into Zach's favorite, which is also my favorite. 
which I think is Mark's favorite. He just didn't think about it. Facts. Yeah, one step up is full liquor bar, lounge. And food. And food. It's got to be good food, though. But most, I mean, actually, all the cigar places we've been to out of the state that serve food. No, actually, here, too, in Orlando. Um, Anyway, my favorite cigar lounge by far. You have a great lounge area. You got places to work. You could get dinner if you want. So, it's like. Why leave? It's not just food. It's a restaurant. Yeah, it's a full restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you could get a filet mignon with your cigar, which I think is the best pairing. Yeah, but there are two different types of these. There's one where you have to get food, and then there's one where you don't have to get food. You can still only smoke if you want. What are the ones that you have to get food at? Don't you have to get food at um, Churchill's? No. No. Really? Yeah, we we smoke first. Definitely. You have to because it's so good, but it's not required. Oh, so you can just sit down there and not- Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what, oh. that's what I did when I was up there. Oh, there. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, you flew in a day late. Yeah. I remember now. He didn't want to enjoy the food. So we smoked like most time there. Then we ate. Yeah. But then we smoked afterwards a little bit. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I don't think we'll go, we'll go back. It is a nice place. We'll go back. No. Nah, thanks, man. <laughs> but yeah, even in Oklahoma, I went to this one place that's basically a restaurant and then they have a smoking room in the back and they'll bring you food and stuff like that. Free, pretty nice. But yeah, Don Cristo Cigars or Churchill Cigar Bar and Bistro in Michigan. Great places to go. To Arguably eat. the two best places in Michigan. Arguably. To eat a nice meal, drink, smoke cigars, and just hang out and have a good time. Yeah. And it's good too because if you want to have a date night, but you still want to smoke a cigar and you know they don't want to smoke but they want to eat some good food it's like the best place to go it's great because you don't have to leave you have everything there uh, hey when i went up there by myself i didn't leave i literally had lunch and dinner there every day when i was over there and you spent the night i did spend the night no not really maybe in the back room can't say <laughs> it's possible and then there's also an extension to most of these places a VIP lounge, mm-hmm. which is an exclusive side where you can pay for a membership, go to the lounge, ideally 24-7, ideally, um, and maybe get benefits with it, like a credit for cigars or cigars thrown in a locker, and you get some free alcohol. Bottles. Bottles, preferably. I do feel like um, if you have a VIP lounge in your cigar shop, um, I don't think it has to be 24 seven. It is recommended. Uh, <laughs> if you have a, <laughs> <laughs> the cigar guys it's, absolutely recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you have a members only cigar lounge, which is our next thing, um, I do think you should have 24 hour access to it. 100%. Oh, if it's members only. Yeah. If you're yeah, going to sure. like a members only lounge. Okay. So now these, the members only lounges are, it, it's weird because like you get ones that you just pay $50 for the year. And you remember, you come in and out whenever you want. But then you have some where you pay a couple grand a year. You know? So, like, I, I personally don't agree with the ones where you pay, like, $3,000 to get into, right? Because what, what are you getting out of that? Well, just, yeah, of course. It, it depends what they offer. And part of what they offer or what they should offer is 24-hour access. Yeah. Because, you know... For example, Jared never sleeps. And if he wants a code somewhere that's not his house, he has trouble. I've caught him closing out the Kava bar, coding. I've caught him. Guilty. <laughs> closing out the cigar bar, coding. Many cigar bars. Many. Many cigar bars fall victim to Jared's coding. And I feel bad. <laughs> Honestly, I feel bad. Because he's, he's like a dog without a Jared's, house. Jared's, Jared, right? Jared's my dear friend, and he doesn't have a place to write code. Yeah, he's like a dog without a house. You know, you know, he's he, wandering. He gets in his car. He's lost, and he's like, "Take me home," and it drives him home. And he just sits in his car because he's like, "I have nowhere to go." Yeah, I, I've seen him code in his car before <laughs> while driving. Yeah, I mean, cops do it. They don't code, but they yeah. don't code, but they 
use their laptops to spy on us. So if you own a cigar lounge that has a members only club or you are a members only club, make sure to stay open 24 hours for Jared. Absolutely. And I think another thing about it is having the exclusivity. Sorry, Jared's making faces at me. So people like that because it avoids having to go to somewhere that's always going to be busy. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You have a basically like a dedicated seat. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's getting emotional on this getting one. Getting emotional. <laughs> no, I just need some whiskey. But you yeah. get what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want to get emotional on this either, but like, <laughs> <laughs> there's just people out there that don't have a good cigar in their hand, a good whiskey to pair with it, and they don't have a lounge chair to sit. You know what I mean? And it's, it should be a God given right. <laughs> yes. It should be a goddamn God given right to be able to smoke a cigar in a lounge with a whiskey. In a loud share. Mm. <sighs> okay. Couldn't, couldn't have said it better myself. Pull this man some more McCallum. I think I'm tearing up. <laughs> you want some more? Give me some more. <laughs> Which is why here at the Cigar Guys, we always make sure that our guests are taken care of. Now, what's your favorite? T- your favorite's the... What... <laughs> what's your what's your least favorite out of the bunch? <laughs> Honestly, lounges without any bar. I agree. Like I, I think if you're gonna have a cigar shop, you got a cigar shop, right? But like a cigar lounge without you know any bar, not a lot of TVs. Like I just feel like it's a uh, it's a child without a purpose. Mm. Yeah. I mean, some states don't allow it. So, you know, you just got to kind of work with what you got. But like, if you're in the area, you know, me Jared's personally, I would, emotional too. I would drive an extra 20 minutes if they had a bar. 30. I would drive eight hours and then eight hours back the same night. Same night. Damn. That's dedication. Someone get this man his keys. <laughs> but I feel like all these places you can bring in your own food, right? I mean, uh, wait, we've done this a million on. times. What? You call him a man? Him? Yeah, he's a Z Zem. Sorry. <laughs> Get Zem his keys. Because <laughs> <laughs> his first he's a he, but his first name is Zach, so he's a Z. Oh. Sorry, Zem. Oh, Zach. that makes sense. I never thought about <clears throat> it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your pronouns. So <laughs> My pronouns are aim. Lower. A- aim 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 aim. Aim A's aim. I'm. What are you saying, Jared? I heard aim something. Sorry, aim. I, you were yeah, interrupt. Yeah. Mark really interrupted you to correct my pronoun pronunciation. I don't know if you remember what you were going to say or if it was important. And then, at all. You and, said, then, and then, and then, exactly. We could bring Europe into this. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I, I guess we could. Interesting. Smoking restaurants. They got a smoking section. You know, Kosovo, we went to dinner at. A restaurant that had a smoking section surrounded by glass mm. overlooking the mountain. Or in Croatia, we went to a seafood spot, overlooks the water, smoke in there. Sensing a theme here. So there's, water. there's smoke shops, cigar lounges, and now seafood spots. Which is not common because people argue that seafood is not good with cigars. I think because, so because of how potent it is. You like seafood, Mark? I love seafood, but I don't think seafood and cigars work together. That's like a, you get seafood All before right. and then you smoke a cigar after. So I'll bring some fried shrimp next time we go out to Scar Lounge. Although I will say that smoked salmon. With a smoked old fashioned? With a cigar goes pretty good. Preferably a smoked cigar. So the, the exception to the rule there. So you like smoked seafood while smoking a cigar. Yeah, if you get like a salmon lox on like some nice toasted bread. There we go. With some cream cheese spread with some salmon on top and some onions and some capers. So salmon. We're going to Mark's top down. And then more salmon on top. What? You said some salmon lox on some bread and then put some salmon on top. I was explaining what a salmon. Oh. Shout out to Don Christos. I had it there. It's good stuff. I'm pretty sure the only thing I had there was a filet. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get off of it. 
Yeah, they have good food, man. We have to go back to try everything. It's true. They got Shababa over there. You don't know what that is. You just order one of everything. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, they do have some good food, man. We're going to make another video up there just about the food. A food tasting mm. slash pairing. Another three hours. Another three hour podcast. This is a good podcast. Really good podcast. Don Cristo Cigars on the Cigar Guys podcast. Go check that one out. Um, rivals Joe Rogan <laughs> in terms of length. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because that episode, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to have to leave early, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Three hours later. Three hours later, like we're all kind of, 10 old fashions. Yeah, we're all kind of drunk. <laughs> we're like, okay, we'll just rotate you guys in every 30 minutes. Three hours long, everyone stayed. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun one. And it was consistent too, like no breaks, no downtime. It was just straight through. Yeah, we were expecting like one old fashioned to sip on the whole time. Yeah, I got like you know, four or five. Yeah, next, yeah, next thing you know, one person drinks it all and they're like, I'm getting another one. You want one? I guess. <laughs> Great people, though. I yeah. think the most important thing about any of these businesses, too, is the people that own it and the people that work there. Oh, 100%. Yeah. That's that's like basically 60% of the business. Yeah, because you have a you know cigar shop and the owner's kind of a dick. It's like, you kind of feel like, why do I go there? True. You go to a cigar shop, just the cigar shop like we were talking about, and the owner's really cool. He talks to you, hangs out. Yeah, you want to go there more. Yeah, exactly. So, that's like mainly... What drives business, I feel like. The people that are there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a major factor. And service ties into that. Yeah, 100%. 100%. We've been to some cigar shops and the owner's kind of rude to us. And we never want to go back. It's true. So our message is simply, if you own a, one of these businesses, it should be cool, you know? Yeah, be chill. Yeah. Be, yeah. I mean, you don't got to be mean. Like you could be I'm looking an, at you, Donnie. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you could be an asshole, but not mean. You know what I'm saying? Not a rude person. You could be a you, nice. You gotta asshole. be personable. Yeah. Yeah. You just gotta be personable. Yeah. But yeah, if you're in the Michigan area, check out Don Cristo's uh, cigar room. Can't say lounge because he got mad at me last time. Because um, <laughs> he's a mean guy. <laughs> <laughs> super cool guys. The owners are super cool. Employees are awesome. Uh, and check out Churchill's also. They're they're really cool over there. Yeah, we're going back up. Hopefully soon. I need some steak tips. Those were good. Yeah. Those are phenomenal. But two, let us know what your favorite style brick and mortar for cigars is. Some of the places that you go to regularly that you enjoy or places you've visited that you enjoy that you want to go back to. You know what? I'll give a mention to your home cigar lounge. Mm, like that, in Jersey. That's the name of it? Oh, I thought he was saying like me personally, my home cigar no, lounge. No, no, no. Well, I mean that too, but like, like you know, some people have cigar lounges in their home where they could bring people um, and relax, like the um, cigar host. Yeah. You know. Beautiful, by the way. Yeah. He, b- 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 better than some lounge, some actual lounges I've been to. <laughs> I thought you were calling him beautiful for a I, second. I thought so too. Yeah, beautiful like, man. <laughs> most beautiful man. But no, lounge is beautiful. He put more work into it than some of the shops and lounges did. Very nice. Yeah, I've only seen pictures. Uh, Alex got invited over there. We did not. Um, he personally told me, I'm glad to have the best cigar guy on the podcast. Didn't we talk about this? Didn't Trump say I was like the cigar guy? I didn't remember. I still haven't seen the video, so. <laughs> Actually, on uh, one time... um Winston Churchill told me I was like the cigar guy, you know? That's pretty crazy because he would consider himself a cigar guy. So Yeah, I know. That's why I was shocked. I was taken back. And um, this was made possible with um, Baron Trump's time machine. So <laughs> Traveler, Travels of Baron. <laughs> Speaking of books, make sure you get The Ultimate Guide to Cigar Smoking available on Amazon. Hard book, soft book. Kindle version as well. Link down below. People have been talking about this quite a bit. So I figured I would talk about it too. Nice. Speaking of supporting us, we also have a donation link down below, which is needs to be utilized more. So be sure you support your favorite cigar podcast so that way we can continue making our content better 
upgrading equipment studio maybe i don't know uh, upgrade studio it, it could happen it could happen we're only barely two years in so your support has meant a lot to us and it's gotten us to a very good point in the amount of time that it's been i just want to say that real quick make sure you keep checking out basis com. we got some uh, good things coming on there mm-hmm. um some secretive things yeah we are also on manek right is that correct that is correct Manek, so if you have any questions, you, you know, you go in there and ask us and we'll, we'll answer it. Yeah. Reach out to us on Manek. And speaking of Basis Cigars, you just missed our back to school special that we did <laughs> on bundles. So make sure you follow us on Instagram, social media, because we're always posting deals and discounts for you to take advantage of. The Cigar Guy starter packs also on there. Hook you up with different types of cigars that you can enjoy from light to medium to full. Um. Yeah. Anything else you want to rant about? No, I think that's good. Us? Did you guys see um uh Matt Walsh <laughs> the at the DNC? Yeah, it was like a world's wall. I thought like it was the, you. I thought it was you. <laughs> yeah, I give it a lot. It's like it's like the where's Waldo of the <laughs> political world. <laughs> just just find the only guy wearing a bright red hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> DNC man, what's going on, Jared? You've been following it like. You're a Democrat yourself. Uh, it's pretty disappointing, honestly. Uh, no surprise there. Uh, because they didn't, they did the roll call on the second day for the voting of the delegates. I thought they were going to do it on the first day. So did they vote? No, a lot of people like withheld their votes, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. But I think they came the, back. Yeah. So, like California passed. Well, but then Gavin Newsom showed up and he was the one that uh, delivered the message. I, yeah. I, I read that's common though for, um, like their home. The home state mm. to like pass on the first one. Oh, that's true. Cause he came back and he was the one that put him over or put her over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which Florida did for Trump too. I don't think they, I don't know if they passed or if it just got, it was in time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he got, you know, he got all of them right away. Yeah. Yeah. Typically the first one passed though. It's, I just see, um, Obama talking about like not separating kids from their family, you know? Didn't he do that though? Yeah, he was the first one to do that. <laughs> yeah, he was the last one to speak after Michelle on Tuesday, but not the last person to speak. Well, speaker, <laughs> yeah, speaker that wasn't the president himself, arguably. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It's four days long. the The RNC was three days long. They no, voted. it was four. Are you sure? Yeah, but. It was more efficient. Okay. Yeah. I just think that there's, there's something has to happen. I just don't think these are the candidates. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It's starting to look like it. Mm. Well, they kind of had to choose Kamala. <laughs> yeah. They already put so much money behind her. Yeah. Like, like they would have lost, I don't know. How, let's just say it was $40 million that was on the, you know, Biden campaign and it's a Biden Kamala campaign. So if anyone else but uh, Kamala ran, then they would have lost that $40 million. I know there's some websites where if you look up the delegate count, it still has Joe Biden there instead of Kamala Harris. Yeah, that's what I'm concerned about. Or not really concerned about, but I just think there's something. Well, because I think technically it's still him in a way. Yeah. Yeah, he's still the front run- runner, I guess. Until it's like officially approved, I guess. But to be honest with you, I think I think that golf match between Trump scared him off. Mm. I think uh, I think <laughs> they sat him. Uh, no, I mean realistically though, think about it. Right, an official statement went out to challenge Joe Biden, and you know Joe Biden versus Trump in a golf match, right? And you know Biden turned it down. So now people are questioning: dude can't even play golf. You know, I mean, I don't think that's a. Pro, like, yeah, now they're questioning it. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm, ju- I'm just saying. I mean, like, think about it. I mean, last, last four years ago, he did one debate against Trump, and then he sat in the basement. He didn't do the, the natural debates. They're supposed to do two or three. He did one debate this year again. Now he disappeared again. Then Kamala comes up. Kamala's going to debate Trump. I doubt it. It doesn't make any sense. I doubt it. And I Walls hope, talking. I hope they debate. No, I hope they debate, but it'd be hilarious. It'd be. be have you guys seen Trump's commercials that he's been putting on TikTok and stuff? Yeah, yeah. We're just like Kamala talking and it's like inflation has been the highest since 2020. 
you know, this and that. And then like, it just, you know, oh, bread is expensive. Milk is expensive. And then it's like, this ad is paid for by Donald Trump. It's like, who's in office right now? <laughs> it's like, I am Donald Trump and I support this message. Yeah. <laughs> And we're legitimately like 76 days away. How are they going to put in two debates? Maybe a VP debate. They wanted to do three in September. Yeah. I just... Back to back. They who? I mean, like, really? Them, generally speaking. They have to do at least one. We've been to the border. I, th- I think <laughs> it's it's fair if they do two more. Because they did one with Joe Biden. Yeah, I agree. If they do two with Kam- with Kamala and then a vice president one. That would be sufficient, more than sufficient, given the circumstances. But the more the merrier at the end of the day. I still think you should have one where Joe Rogan's just talking to them. Yeah. I don't think the left will do that, though, because the left always has to have it on their platform. It's always like CNN, MSNBC. It's always one of those. Yeah, we'll see if the Fox one actually happens. Yeah, it's probably back out. The flight's going to get delayed. Rescheduled. So, Speaking oh, of, so is it scheduled? The I think it's technically scheduled. They both agreed to it. But did you see that the DNC sued RFK and they were supposed to have the hearing in Philadelphia, but then they moved it to some small town. I forget the name. Hence small town. And then they had to switch his flight to that town and the flight got canceled and there was no flights out into that because it's a small town it's yeah, hard yeah. to get flights there so he didn't make it and then the judge basically i think dropped it or not dropped it but penalized him they wouldn't let him uh testify because he couldn't make it and they were like never have i heard of a flight cancellation being enough reason to not postpone and let him still be a witness what they sue him for or try to sue him for i don't remember because there's a few lawsuits i don't remember which one it was But they're doing everything they can to get him out, which is probably a bad thing for them. Well, word on the street is maybe by the time this episode comes out, he's going to endorse Donald Trump. That is true. His running mate said that they're debating if they should stick to it or step down and throw their support behind Donald Trump. This is true. So I guess by the time this comes out, we'll see what happens. Supposedly, as we're filming, it's going to be this Friday. Hmm. Yeah, so like last Friday. What cabinet positions would he allow them to pick or be in? I don't know. As long as it's not like press secretary, I don't want to have to hear him speak the entire administration. Yeah, what about like a trade general or something like that? <laughs> what? I don't think. I, I think it could be that. Yeah. Why not? I think you actually need like a general and what? an attorney. Maybe the attorney part. <laughs> They're just oh, cabinet yeah. positions. Yeah, They're not true. voted in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Energy. I don't know. Now that'd be like an Elon Musk position. That's true. Who has also admitted that he would be willing to serve. Yes, and then it'd be uh, awesome to have like Joe Rogan be the press secretary. Well, mm. well, he was going to be what like a uh, director of efficiency or something. <laughs> Did yeah. you see his tweet? You I mean, can yeah. make up any of these positions. We do need that though in the government. Somebody to make sure that all the money is spent efficiently. Someone who can fire 90% of the congressmen and senators. Is that possible? And everything still works? I don't think so. But better? Yeah. I, I just think there's like a whole like, they spend so much money on everything, right? They need like one sp- a specific group of people to keep an eye on it, on what everything's being spent on. True. I think they are keeping an eye on it, but they aren't doing it for the right reasons. They know exactly where all the money's going, but they're choosing to omit certain. Not that they don't know where the money's going, records. but it's just that like um, the price they're paying on certain things. Oh yeah, but that's intentional too. If they wanted to, they could do it cheap. They could do these things cheaper. It's all money laundering, though. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but you wouldn't say it's money laundering. Not all of it, no. Not all of it, but the things you're referring to. No, I just think people are able to charge a certain thing to the government. And they know they're going to get away with it, so they charge it and they make the money. That's what it means. Money laundering. I would, that's not really money laundering. It's legal money laundering. If I if I start a company and I start selling towels to the government, uh, 10k a pop, 
for like an insane amount and they buy it. 30,000 toilet seats. It's not money laundering. I mean, that's just bit business. Yeah. Yeah. Money laundering has a strict guideline of what money laundering is. In the legal sense of it. You feel me? I guess. I still wouldn't really say that, but yeah, I wouldn't consider money laundering. Because you got to think about it. Like, if you, if I own this private company and you as a government said, you know, hey, uh, I'm going to buy towels from you. I have a million dollars to spend on these towels. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to charge as much as you can for these towels. One towel, a million dollars. And hire the least amount of people. You know what I mean? You know, within reason, but. It's still not so, ethical. Um, it depends. I mean, it it's depends. not ethical for the government to allow that. Well, they limit how much money you can make off of it. So just because the company is making that much money doesn't mean you could pull profit from it. Like, you know, any any government contractor is uh, limited on the income that they could bring home, like as an owner. So what it basically does is it helps you expand your business to have more employees, to have, you know, more buy contracts. More, buy more cars, buy more real estate. Well, yeah, but in turn, that helps the economy. True. So it's like, let's just say you turned a profit of uh, $800,000 in that year and, you know, you paid yourself the maximum, which we're just making up numbers, but let's just say it was two, three, four hundred K, right? Well, you still have another, you know, 400 that you could play around with so that you invest that in the business, expand your building, hire more employees, get another contract, you know. Not against it at all as a businessman. But for the sake of our country, why are we throwing so much money away on stupid stuff like 30,000 toilet seats, $30,000 toilet seats? I agree. They're not that expensive. That's exagger- exaggerated. But yeah, there definitely you is. You get the point though. Yeah, there's a premium. Yeah. You get the point, right? Uh, do you get the point? I get the point. <laughs> the, the problem honestly <laughs> lies on big defense companies or big uh, government comp- government contractors because they all team together and are like, hey, if this contract, you know, because the way you win contracts is by bidding. So whoever's the lowest bidder wins. Like that, that's how they, they've always run it. But if you had five major companies uh, in that field all team up and they're like, hey, you know, let's not bid below 50 million for this contract or a billion, 1.2 billion for this contract. Then it's like they all put in their bids that are above $1 billion and, you know, winner takes all. But meanwhile, realistically, you could get that worth for $500 million instead of a billion. So, and that's where we come in, right? Yes. Yeah. We completely where, undercut that, them. That's where um, Jerry Burrow's logistics come in. I like well, that name. Well, that, that was a whole, that was, I mean, War Dogs, you know, is based on a true story, but that was the whole premise of that. You know, they, that's why, like, in the show uh, or in the movie, he was pissed. He's like, oh, how much lower, you know, were we from the next, like, <laughs> bid up? And they're like, uh, we can't say, oh, it was $50 million. And they're like, oh, fuck, are you serious? And yeah. they still made a shit ton of money, but they could have made $50 million more. Yeah, that was a great movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. The guy actually has, like, an academy now or something. I don't know how well it is, but. Don't they all? <laughs> they got to make money somehow. But yeah. I think that about wraps it up. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Sound good to you. Sounds good. Sound good to you. I think we could do another hour. We could. Yeah, we could we could stretch it. Next thing on the topic is um waves. Where do they come from? How do they form? <laughs> <laughs> Moon. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for tuning in to this podcast. See you on the next one. Bye. Later. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. 
Looking for short-form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.